many clients seen in occupational therapy, especially pediatrics, are autistic. So what happens when one of those who are often seen as a client becomes a practitioner? My name is Stephanie and I'm an autistic adult advocate and certified occupational therapy assistant. Today I wanted to share with you why or how being autistic or having autism, however you want to say it, is an asset to me as an occupational therapy assistant or OTA. I'd also like to mention that this probably extends to OTs as well. It's just that I'm an OTA and that's my experience, so I'll be focusing on that. Going through school was sometimes awkward, especially when we were learning about developmental disabilities, because of course that included autism spectrum disorder or ASD. And it actually wasn't just ASD that made me feel this way because there were many other developmental disabilities that share characteristics or have a common difficulties that also overlap with autism or what I have difficulty with. And I wanna make it clear that I think it's extremely important that students be familiar with different conditions that they may encounter and what the maybe core struggles that certain people might have with those. I certainly don't think people should have been walking on eggshells around me when it came to talking about these sorts of things. This is just my experience and having feelings about things doesn't necessarily mean that the situation or the, or the process was a bad thing necessarily. It's just that it kind of hurts to um, see all of your deficits being put on a PowerPoint slide <laughs> over and over see why you need help, why you're the target population. And it's not like I'm not acutely aware, right? It's not like I don't literally talk about these things on a YouTube channel or a blog where anyone could access it if they so chose. It's just a bit personal, I guess. It's also a bit weird hearing people try to explain your deficits or things about a condition you have when they don't have it. And I mean, I don't blame them. They're doing their best. They mean well. And I'm sure it's weird when I try to explain things that I don't experience. So I bring this up because it's actually a core reason of why being autistic or having autism as an OTA is an asset, especially working in pediatrics or with those who have developmental disabilities. There's something about the relationship between a client and the practitioner, sometimes called the patient. It's almost like the client is like this person who needs all these things and the practitioner is this person who has all the answers, who's working with them to try to like fix them and make them better. It's like they have all the skills that you need to acquire, all the things that you don't have. They're just one of a number of people that you go see because you struggle with things and they're helping you try to fix that, just like all these other appointments that you have to go to. Especially for children and teens, this is a glaring issue. That you have to go to these appointments that other people don't. That you have these deficits that your peers don't. This feeling that everything is focused on you and the problems that you have. The feeling that you have to work 10 times harder than anyone else just to do something that they can easily do. My deficits are probably my biggest strength in OT. There's a part of OT called therapeutic use of self. Uh, essentially, it's basically professionally mediated empathy, in my opinion, and it's my most used approach. I can't catch the ball either. <laughs> in fact, I'm worse than you at it. Watch me try to stand on one foot like you just did and I will fall over immediately. That's always been hard for me too. You know, I'm not sure I really get this either. Um, I hated that in middle school. And these are genuine responses. It's not like I'm pretending that I can't catch the ball or I'm pretending that I'm gonna fall over. I just do, that's <laughs> just how it is. Being bad at things, having deficits, has actually been really helpful in making my clients feel comfortable and connected. They see that I don't always have everything together. They sometimes see me stutter or stim. They watch as I fumble the ball that they just threw me or when I repeat someone else's answer during a working memory activity. There's someone who's supposed to have it all together who's not as good at things that they're good at. Seeing me struggle with things that they do or do not struggle with really helps them see that we're both human beings that are working hard in areas that are not the easiest for us. For my autistic clients, I have the unique position of advocacy on their behalf. I get to explain from a first person point of view 
what they might be experiencing or how they might be feeling. You get to talk with parents about things that they're concerned about from the view of someone who also has the same condition as their child. I get to tell teenagers how I eventually learned how to navigate things. I get to share with them things that work for me personally. And I get to show them that autism doesn't mean they can't succeed. I get to show them what it's like to be an adult who is accepted and included by their professional peers as I work alongside occupational therapy and speech therapy practitioners, even while I stim communicating with them. I get to show them that there's hope, that not everyone is going to treat them like an outcast. I get to show parents that their child can be so much more than what the doctors may have told them. I get to show them that it's not the end of the world, that their child has different sensory needs than others. I get to show them that it's possible for their child with autism to grow up and become a skilled professional helping others. I get to show parents that their children can have peers that respect them and value their input. And even if the struggles that a client has would prevent them from being able to have the kind of job that I do, I get to show them that there are people who value them and accept them and care for them as who they are and don't see them as just incapable. I get to show them that they can still belong. I can give parents hope that there might be people around them who know their child struggles more intimately, who can be around and support them in the future. I've spoken with parents regarding mental health, peer relationships, emotional regulation, sensory, and so much more. All from an empathetic point of view that might help them understand their child more and help them kind of see things from a certain perspective that they might not normally get. I am beyond blessed by the people that I work with right now. I can't help but think how much I wish more people were like them. How I hope that my clients make friends with people like them. People who genuinely want to be around you, who take you seriously, who aren't bothered by your loud stims or big movements, who want to collaborate with you and hang out with you and enjoy time being spent with you. They're a beautiful and shining example of what inclusivity and inclusion really is. They're not pretending or trying to say all the right words or giving me an extension of some kind of pity. They just see me as who I am. When I first looked into occupational therapy, I was worried. I thought, you know, maybe people won't want someone with autism handling clients and patients. I was worried about what patients and clients would think, but also just like what would healthcare workers think? What would parents think? I thought about how my deficits would stop me from succeeding, especially because there's always this really big emphasis on those soft skills that I just am naturally not good at. What I didn't know is that people like me have a unique value in this field. There are so many people who can do so much that I can't. But I can also do so much that they can't. It's really important to acknowledge the different roles that we can take on and the impact we can have on people just by being genuine and authentic and how our lived experience and how our deficits and how being empathetic with others and understanding that people don't want to just be another patient or another client. They want to be a human being. They want to know that they're not alone in struggling, how important all of that is. So for me, being autistic is a huge asset as an OTA, and I hope that anyone else who is neurodivergent in some way thinking about going into occupational therapy would sincerely consider it and the unique value that they bring. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!